In this video, I'm going to be talking about Camera Raw, and I'm going to be working through Chapter 3 with you. So Camera Raw uses the same editing engine as a Lightroom Develop tab. It's basically the same, but some settings are in different places. Camera Raw's user interface was recently updated to look more like the Lightroom Develop tab. Therefore, some of the images in the book don't look the same but the information is still very valid. If you open a raw image in Photoshop, it will automatically open in Camera Raw first. Now you can use the Camera Raw, camera raw as a filter while in Photoshop, for example, if you wanted to open a JPEG. So to use the Camera Raw filter on a JPEG, you would open the image in Photoshop, then go up to Filter and Camera Raw. Okay, so download these images by clicking on each name. These are the images you'll be working on today. Once you get them downloaded, it's time to open up Photoshop. Now there are a couple different ways to open images in Photoshop. Of course, there's the open button and then you can just go to the folder in your computer. You can also have the folder open in Finder or the uh, file viewer and you can click on a file, right click and go to open with and choose Photoshop. You can also just drag it in. So for this first photo, it says one, two, one through five exposure controls, texture contrast. So we're gonna be using this image for the first five pages in this chapter. So I'm gonna go ahead and click and drag and then let go of it in Photoshop and it automatically opens in Camera Raw. So when you first open up um, a raw image in Photoshop, you may get this uh, dialog box asking you how you wanna set up your Camera Raw. That's because they just came out with a brand new uh, interface change for this. So our book, um, all the examples are actually gonna be using this older style I'm going to be doing these videos based off of the newer style because we might as well just move forward and not do it, do it the old way. Things are changing all the time, so I'm going to go ahead and pick this one. Alright, so let's go over to the textbook and check out the first page. So you can see that this actually looks quite a bit the same, pretty much exactly the same. Um, the big difference is, is that before Camera Raw had these tabs at the top, but now they've changed it so it's like Lightroom where we have all of your panels over here on the right side. So it's not too different, just a little bit different from the photos in the book. So this first one, I'm gonna go ahead and um, do everything in the first five pages, which is all gonna be in this basic panel. All right, let's speed it up. Now on the fifth page, this is talking about texture, and they're talking specifically about the clarity slider. We do have a clarity slider here. They've also actually added a texture slider, so it has slightly different controls. I'm gonna go ahead and zoom in on the city area to kind of see the difference. So if I take the clarity all the way to the left, it gets this really soft look. If I go all the way to the right, it gets this really contrasty look. Same with the texture. If I go all the way to the left, it gets a softer look. Well, let's reset the clarity so you can see. And if I go all the way to the right, it gets this really rich looking look. So they do very similar things, um, but they are slightly different. So go ahead and just play with that a little bit until you get it to a good place. So now that we've done these areas, whoops, my highlights have, are back blown out again. Now that we've done these first five pages, you're gonna take a screenshot, and this will be the first file um, out of the, I think, what is it, five or six? Let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven files that you're gonna turn in. Now you do need to turn in your files all together at once. If you try to turn in a file in Canvas and then upload another file, it's just going to delete the previous one. So finish all of your uh, work, get all of your seven screenshots together, and then you'll be turning it in. All right, so take your screenshot, and let's move on to the next one. 
Now if we wanted to go ahead and open this in Photoshop, we would go ahead and click open. If you want to just move on, you can click done. You're more than welcome to keep playing if you want by clicking open and taking it into Photoshop and playing with some of those tools that we looked at in um, chapter one, let's say, or chapter two. But uh, you don't have to do that for this assignment. So you can go ahead and just click done if you'd like. And now let's open up the next one. All right, so I've got the white balance photo is next. I'm gonna go ahead and click, drag, and then let go. I'm gonna show you how I like setting my white balance when there's a neutral in the photo, such as white or a gray, like a sidewalk. In this case, we have a bride, so we know her dress should be white, not this weird yellow. So I'm gonna come over here, and in the basic panel, there's this color picker, picker tool. I can click there, click on the dress, and it fixes the white balance. I can also, um, this looks a little dark to me, and if we look up at the histogram, we can see that there's hardly any information on the bright areas of this image, which isn't correct because we have a white dress and some light colored pillars. So this is telling me that my exposure is too dark. I'm gonna go ahead and click and drag up to spread that exposure over that area. I'm gonna turn off the highlights for that. I'm not too worried about that area. She's the most important thing to me for this photo. We can also play with some of the other things that we did earlier in this chapter, such as holding down shift and double clicking on the white slider and then the black slider to set our black and white points. All right, and we have a much better exposure and tonality across the entire image. Take your screenshot, go ahead and hit done and let's open up the next photo. I'm gonna click on the photo, drag it on over and let go. Okay, and we're going into color boost. So this is all about boosting the overall color. And there's, um, for this we're gonna be using the vibrance and it's a little bit different than the saturation. The vibrance is taking up areas that have dull colors as it is. Okay, but if I double click on the area, it'll reset. Saturation takes up everything and that can look pretty funky. So I'm not gonna use that, I'm gonna use Vibrance. The next page is boosting just one color, which is what we did um, with that HSL panel. Here they're talking about HSL, but it's hidden. Well, not hidden, but they're calling it color mixer here. So open up your color mixer and you can play with just um, some of the colors. So let's take, let's say green, we wanna make that super green. And let's see, we have some orange shrimp, so let's make it super orange. All right, so once you played with some of those colors, move this up so I can see that you played with the, vi with the vibrance and some of these colors, take a screenshot, and then we'll move on. I'm gonna hit done. And just as a reminder, even though I'm going through this kind of quick, you should be pausing the video and reading through all of this information so that you can get all of the extra stuff that they're talking about. I just wanna make sure that I show you, what you what's going on since the photos in the book have changed from the actual uh, camera raw format. Next, we're gonna be doing the backlit and cropping. So I double clicked on it and it automatically is set to open in Photoshop for my computer files. That might not be what happens with yours, but you can set up your computer to do that, FYI. All right, let's get working on this one now. Okay, so here the crop has changed. These tools that are up here um, have been moved over to the side. So you can click here and play around with stuff with the crop. It's just over here on the side instead. Um, something that has changed is that I believe it tells you to, if you want to keep your ratio for your crop, you have to hold down shift. That's no longer the case. Um, if you want to keep it, it's automatically locked, aspect ratio. If you want to unlock it, just click this little lock box or lock icon right here and then you can move things around as you want. Go ahead and follow what's going on here and move to the next page where we talk even more about cropping. And 
Now that we've done all of these things with this one, let's go ahead and take your screenshot and make sure that your panels are showing. I'm going to hit done and let's open the next one. Okay, I'm going to click and drag it over. And we're going to straighten this out. Now instead of the tool being up here, it is now nested underneath the crop tool. So open up the crop tool. Here's the ruler they're talking about. Click here. And I'm going to base it off of this line, the water line here. So I'm going to click once, drag, let go. And now it has shifted, it has turned the photo so that it is straight. I'm going to hit return to keep that. Okay, remove darkening in the corners. So um, they've changed the name from lens correction icon. Now it's going to be optics. So let's slide on down. We have use profile corrections, remove chromatic aberrations, and also go manual. And here's where the vignette slider is. So you can take away those dark corners. You can make them darker, you can make them brighter, whichever you whichever you would want for your photo. For this exercise, go ahead and make them brighter. Um, this will, um, the profile stuff, the automatic profile corrections will usually only work if you're using a raw file because it is reading the information and looking at exactly what camera and lens was used and correcting with that. Okay, for image sharpening, we are going to come down here to detail, so it has changed a bit too, and we have sharpening here. You can go ahead and go sharper. Now this page, um, there is some stuff in here that is no longer really available in Camera Raw that I have found at least, but we can do later in Photoshop. So don't worry too much about this page, just know that the sharpening slider is right here. And you want to get in, let's go ahead and getting close and you can see what it does. So I'm going to take all the sharpening off and that looks pretty good. But the more you go on up, the more textural it looks. So you want to kind of be careful with this slider. You don't want to go, you might think, oh, the sharper the better, but you can see the issues it's causing with the skin. Later on, we're going to be actually um, going in and editing a portrait in Photoshop where we'll work on only doing things like sharpening the eyes. We've done everything for this image for now, so take your screenshot. And this page, adjust a bunch of images at once. Go ahead and read through this on your own and apply it if it becomes necessary for you in your future editing. Same with undo my changes. Create one click presets. Once you've read through this, um, go ahead and start the video again and I'll start up with the reducing noise in my image. Okay, so now that you've read through those pages, I'm going to go ahead and open another image. So I'm going to click Done, and I'm going to come over here and go to Reduce Noise. I'm going to click and drag that and bring it in here. And noise is caused by having a really high ISO when you're shooting. So this doesn't look too bad. But I'm going to go ahead and come to this detail panel and take down the color noise reduction. And let's go ahead and zoom in here. Okay, so you can see that there is um, all of the noise is all these little like gritty look that we have happening. You can see that there is um, the skin tone. It has a bunch of different colors in there and it has this very gritty look in the background too, and that's because we had a really high ISO of 4000 for this. You, so, let's go ahead and take the noise reduction up, and it starts to smooth it out a bit, and in this case, the color noise reduction is gonna be really helpful. You can see it's starting to take out all those extra colors. Now, you wanna be careful with these sliders because the higher you go out, the softer 
your image will get and then you're going to start being like oh well now I need to add some clarity um, which can make that the texture come out more <laughs> so it's really you know you just gotta play with the sliders and see what's gonna look best for your image uh, so let's look up here take all this down and again you can see all of this um, these little colors in here and again just take that color noise reduction up noise reduction and that's looking pretty good let's go to the next page so just read over this go ahead and read over this and apply it to your own image making if you please so now that we've played with that a bit let's go ahead and click to zoom back out make sure that I can see this panel and take a screenshot I'm gonna go ahead and hit done And now I'm going to uh, open up the next photo. All right. So fixing lens problems like bulging. We've already talked about the lens issues already a bit. Um, let's go ahead and open up the optics. And there's a couple places that we can, a couple things we can do. Um, so bulging, there's not too much bulging in this, but you can see when I turn this on and off that it does change and you realize that it is bulging in a little bit on this and that's because it was using a wider angle lens. <clears throat> okay, next we have stop le buildings from leaning back and that's actually where we're going to open up the geometry panel and you can do an auto and there's also different types of settings here along with manual transformation so let's just see how auto does all right so it did does did pretty good it straightened up these buildings pretty well this looks like it's leaning a little bit still so oops not that one so Let's play with this vertical, and I'm looking at the side of the building to try to get it to straighten out. There we go. All right, not too shabby. Then I would have to come in here and crop out those other edges. Okay, and I'm gonna click the lock, open up the lock so I can just bring in these edges here. and hit return to keep that. Okay, let's go to the next page. Okay, fringing. So, um, oh, whoops, this is getting rid of the areas that are clipping. We already did that. I don't know why they did this again. So that would be again up here in the detail panel with the highlights, um, turning on, clicking on this little triangle up here like we did in uh, when we talked about Lightroom. We can see all the areas that are blown out and then take our highlights down to take care of that. While I'm here, I'm just going to take my shadows up too. All right. Okay, let's go to the next one. Okay, now we're going to look at the purple and fringe, the uh, purple and green fringing. Okay, so this one specifically, this image has actually red and blue, and I'm going to show you what I'm talking about. I'm going to click here and if you see on this SUV you can see that there's like this very thin blue line and this thin uh, red line that's called a chromatic aberration where the colors in your with your lens didn't exactly match up and this happens with a a lot with um, cheaper lenses I'm saying cheaper um, the lens that I shot this with was actually a thousand a thousand dollar lens so you can start to imagine how much really high quality lenses cost. Um, but we can go ahead and fix that. So let's go back to optics. And if I click on this remove chromatic aberration, you can see that it has aligned the, those colors and now we don't have that extra fringing happening. 
So let's go to the next page to see a before or, or after, a before and after of the panel I'm working on. Go ahead and read through this, but the easy one that I like to use is the backslash button. And I can see before and after, before and after. Sweet. There are some other um, options by clicking over here and over here. You can see before and afters as well. All right, that's the end of this chapter. So go ahead and make sure that you have these panels opened up and take your screenshot. Now go, go to your screenshots, crop them all down um, so that we're, I'm only seeing the Photoshop area and turn those files in to Canvas. Yay, done with chapter three.